a little corner. Oh, a double-minded man is unstable in all his ways. So for you to, listen, we've been doing Show Me Your Glory, um, we experience his glory, we're moving to another level in his glory. But how are you going to operate in that realm without faith? And how are you going to have faith in what God says about himself, in what his word says about him, in what his word says about who you are in him, if you don't study the word? You have to know the word of God. That is the meat. I don't care if you are a vegetarian, that's the meat. Right? So, if you are seeking after God's righteousness, you can't do it without delving in the Word. Uh -huh. It is in the Word that you find out who you are in God. It is in the Word you know your identity. Uh -huh. Right? When you know your identity, things like loss is not an issue uh -huh. because you are in Christ. Uh -huh. Christ don't have no problems with loss. He won't overcome all of them things there. Uh -huh. So if we are like Him, then we have overcome them. Walk in it now. Uh -huh. Walk in it. It is in the word, we also come to know God as the faithful one. I mean, it not get more faithless than us. Seriously, I'm not talking felt up over, I'm just talking man generally. It doesn't get more faithless than us. The, I mean, picture the Egyptians, the, sorry, the Israelites. Well, they did have an Egyptian mindset as soon in this day. But picture the Oh, I don't want to do no damage to your weapon, you see. Picture them saying, boy, you know, we could have eaten garlic and leek and fish for free in Egypt. So, may I ask you something now? They were calling out to God because they were so free. Really? They were calling out to God because things were so easy. They were crying for him to deliver them because they weren't feeling the pain of the lash. That was just like, oh, another day. I'm cool with it. Beat me some more, I'm into SNM. No, they were calling out to God because they was feeling pain, as my grandmother would have said, in them Giznik. Right? Because imagine, you supposed to build a pyramid. You get a coat of straw, you get brick, you get whatever. And suddenly, because God said he wants you to be free. <laughs> you know how you have to go make not just find no it used to come to you, you know. No, you have to go find it, meet your quota in I see him there and build. <laughs> the enemy put you on pressure when God wants to free you. Right? Often as we delve in the word, because of our enthusiasm to know God, the Holy Spirit, who is our teacher will open the seals of the word and revelation knowledge comes. Too often, we want the all else of the kingdom without seeking God's righteousness and the kingdom of God. Seek ye first the kingdom of God and all his righteousness. Right? You can't want the all else without meeting the criteria. You can't want the all else without meeting the criteria. You can't want all the blessings of God without bringing your life into order. You can't do that. Because that would mean God not keeping his word. Come on, come on. The definition of a covenant, you know, I came across it the other day, is a conditional promise that God makes. Right? Or conditional. 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 It means you do this, I do this. That means it is unsaid, but it means if you don't do this, I can't do this. Right? Now, sometimes we pray and we rebuke the devourer. <laughs> it's not our job that you know. It is not our job to rebuke the devourer. You know. What is our job? To bring in the tithes in the storehouse. Right? And he will rebuke the devourer. So you could have sow a seed till you're weak. Right? If you're not tithing, the devourer is going to yam up your harvest. Okay? So you have to bring your life into order. When we are in right fellowship with God, the all, all else happens 
without us even being aware of it. Suddenly it's just starting to happen in our lives. And because our focus is on him and obeying his word and speaking his word back to him and in our life, change happened. And you just wonder, oh, when did this happen? I, <laughs> I was reading the story of Joseph the other day and I, I, I recognized something that in the, in, when Pharaoh had a dream about the, the time of plenty and then the time of famine, <laughs> they brought one-fifth, during the time of plenty, they brought one-fifth into the storehouse. But I kept going back to that. One-fifth, one-fifth. Holy Spirit said, do the math. One-fifth is two-tenths, that's a double tithe. So in the time of plenty, tithe double, so you can prepare for the time of famine. Okay? You can't... Preach, God! Preach! <laughs> you can't... You know, sometimes we, sometimes we want a healing gift because we want to say, Come on, come on. Me the healer. Come on, come on. Right? Or we want a prophetic gift because you want to say you are prophet on, this or prophet on, that. Come on. Right? Or you want to, to be a, a somebody who have a, 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 an, an anointing for, um, I would go to use the word fortune, financial blessing. Come on, come on. Or you want to say, I'm the man, I'm the prosperity man. Come on, come on. Right? But that should not be our focus. Come on. If we are seeking fellowship with God. I mean, you're going to find yourself healing somebody by the power of the Holy Spirit. It just have happen. You don't have to work up nothing. You don't have to say, I am healer Sylvia Dallas. Yeah. You want your knee fix? Come to me. Call me. Call me. Are you free reading? No. It don't work so. <laughs> right? No, you're going to because of the presence of, let me tell you, because of the presence of God in you, you know, God in you, demon must flee. Amen. You understand me? Amen. They won't try a thing, you know. But they must flee. They won't tell you a lie. Come on. <laughs> I had an experience just yesterday. The day before yesterday when we went to that place, by the time I came to church, well, you know, I have to money. Money move out of socket, which, as far as me concerned, that's not supposed to happen because many heal. But I have this pain in my shoulder. By the time I got home, I was limping. I missed I got over this. And my shoulder was in such agony. And all I'm hearing in my mind is, yeah, figure that to know. My response is my granddaughter's favorite response. The blood of Jesus, me now go on a doctor. When I woke up, my knee was swollen to twice its size. When I got up off the bed and I just stamped my foot, blam, and I said, the blood of Jesus, my knee healed. Amen. I went to the bathroom, bed, got ready, and I was supposed to teach at my grandson's school for teacher's day. <laughs> what can you stop me? Yeah, man. By the time I actually started to dress, you know, my knees, the swelling started to go down. And trust me, me no use no tiger balm, me no use no painkiller, no anti-inflammatory medicine, no, the blood of Jesus. That was it. Because I am believing that my knee is healed. Anything else is a lie. It's a lie. And I'm not receiving that. So I went to Greater Pomore Primary. I thought for Teacher's Day, according to what my grandson said, I was supposed to teach him. It turns out I was to teach the whole class. So the teacher said, what are you going to teach her? So he said, I'm going to talk to them about Jesus. So I was there talking to all these children about Jesus. When, just as I bought, me said, be a go and good to you know. How to make all to call to you know. <laughs> Boy! <laughs> And the assistant teacher came up to me and said, there are two other grandmothers here who want to teach, so you're going to have to stop now. So I said, okay, I just instructed them that, you know, they are not too young to receive Christ. And actually put Ash on the spot, because when I said Ash was a Christian, everybody went, what? 
And I said, no, Ash. They must know you're a Christian by the light that shines from you. So I gave them permission to take him to account. Whenever he did some, whenever he does something, to say, is that what Christ would do? So I'm expecting to hear a good report because he's now on the spot. No, what did bother me was the grandmother that came after me was telling a Nancy story. So kind of just bother me. But I was going by Auntie Carol for just relaxing. I just say, you know, Holy Spirit, I'm about to prove this devil a liar, you know. You know me, I walk with Auntie Carol. So <laughs> right away the pain in my knee starts. I said, shut up, liar. <laughs> you know why you're not for you. <laughs> start to walk the sun, I go hot, the sun shall not smite me by day. Amen, amen. I said, Holy Spirit, thank you for some cloud cover. I said, the clouds go over. I start singing, uh, yesterday, sing. I had the headphone in my ear and singing, Jesus at the center of my life. And I was belting it out. Man, I was having a good time. And I'm walking and I'm taking my time. And one time, I need to try and move out. I start, me said, don't you dare. You are under my subjection. It's not you rule me. It's the other way around. I say you must stay line up. You must stay line up. The blood of Jesus. Right? Me not afraid for you, God. Me dab it all over. Amen. Right? And I walked to the supermarket. Me have one two hundred dollars in my pocket. I walked to the supermarket. I bought what I was buying. Um, you can't take taxi, God, or not, Auntie Carol. No, I'm not taking no taxi. I walk. I prove you're wrong. Can you lie? Not no wrong with me. You're not tired. She have a coach. We can't see. Right? So, I went there. <laughs> Never even sleep. We spend the whole day talking about Jesus. You know what So, when Jesus says something, like, when Jesus says anything, I believe it. But you see, when me read that scripture, we say, verily, verily, are truly this my antenna go up you know because yeah. that tell me say pay attention because sit now to happen so to be in right standing with god you have to obey and submit to his word in every single thing you have to allow him to cleanse your heart let me rephrase that we have to allow him to cleanse our hearts of all unrighteousness how many times, no, I'm set up hard this, but you're walking in power, right? In Joshua, one of my favorites, um, you know, I, I tend to love the, the Old Testament, um, even more than the New Testament, because really I'm a person who likes narration, so um, I tend to like to read st um, things in story form, even more than I like an essay type thing. And, <laughs> Chrissy, Chrissy tells me that's because I'm a war boat, but... Amen. I mean, yeah. <laughs> $2,500 where you help make up for buy the, the leg brace. That time seven, plus article tax. Give you a 17, uh, tell him say you want it back. Somebody have to bring it, come get you now for work for. It won't be 49. <laughs> right? And when I went to the doctor's office, you know, and he said, Oh, he has to put a cast on my leg for six months. Miss, right in his office about the blood of Jesus that now happened. That they never have a fight. Say, me too expensive for rock car. Me tied. So I'm not supposed to give out none of my money. Right? He gave me that look as if to say, oh, one of those. But mm. that's what I was declaring. Mm -hmm. I'm not putting on no cast for six months to immobilize me. Not only that, he sent me to do an MRI. <laughs> When I heard $29,000, let me get up and say, Pastor, come. <laughs> right? You have to be so sure of the promises of God that you can't stand on them. You can't stand upon a shaky ground and feel secure. On this solid rock I stand, now move. Right? And I'm not saying I have it right a hundred percent of the time but one thing i know in the last two years i've gotten it right more times than i've ever gotten it in my life and i am being like paul me now look behind me me pressing on to the high mark right of the calling of jesus christ on my life right before i was born him draw up a plan for me right so i am going to be a purpose achiever right i saw today where a friend of mine 
um, built her office, a new development company. And they say she's an overachiever. Say so you're not an overachiever, you're a purpose achiever. Right? Because you're a woman of God and you walk in purpose. All of us need to be purpose achievers. Right? And you can't do that if you don't know what the plans of God are for you. You can't know what the plans of God are for you if you're not talking to Him. And if you're not listening to Him. Because you can chat from now till tomorrow. If you're not listening, you still won't know what your plans are. What the plans are for you. But one of my favorite stories in the Old Testament is Joshua. Saying, sun stands still over Gibeon. Moon stands still over whatever the place is. Can't remember the name of the place. And I, <laughs> I remember the first time I read it. I said, God, I saw me want to move. I saw me want to move. And you know, we did that here in 2012. I think Carol would remember there was one more person. It was the health fair. And a squall was coming over. And you remember that Tisha was coming over. And you could see that the, the very black cloud was settling over the church. And the three of us just agreed and said, cloud move from over here. And we said, storm move from over here and go that way. And we just saw the clouds just move that way. We need to do that more often. That is supposed to be normal for us. That's supposed to be normal for us. Right? So, but Joshua didn't say sun stand still just out of the blue. God made some promises to him. In Joshua 1 verse 1 he says, I'll give you every place you set your foot. These are the borders of the territory I'll give you. No one will be able to stand against you all the days of your life. He never said some of the days. He said all the days of your life. As I was with Moses, so I will be with you. I will never leave you nor forsake you. And then he tells him, be strong and courageous. Obey all the laws Moses gave you. Do not deviate, don't turn left, don't turn right so that you can have good success. Right? <clears throat> the word success comes from the word succedere. It's a Latin word. It means to come close to. So when the Lord said good success, I never mistake it, Mick. You understand me? You don't want to come close to, you want to be successful. Right? So you don't want success in a venture, you want good success. He says, keep this book of the law always on your lips. Why do you think he said that? Joshua must speak the word. He never said if you catch it now, cheek on and ruminate with it like a piece of chewing tobacco. Right? He said, keep it on your lips. It means to speak the word. And he also said to meditate on it day and night. Let me tell you something. If I will always have a lot of respect for Shadi Carty. In a time of trial, she drop on a word where she knew. And when she said, she never said, and God might put me to the test one day, that <laughs> For God, come hold me up. I am going to, quite likely, bust out in some tongues. <laughs> now, in my previous years, when I never knew the tongues, I was very lippy even when I was holding me up. So now that I know tongues, I'll be even more lippy. You understand me? Because what? I believe when I sing, I am walking in power. I'm working miracles. I know who I am. I believe it. I mean, I take... Nobody else chat for. Sometimes you have a dream and you share it with somebody. And the first thing them do is, why well, you better make a contingency plan. Never make room for failure when you deal with God. Never ever make, listen to me, your faith, every one of us has been given a measure of faith. The other night when I was praying and the Lord was talking to us, you know, he said to me, every one of us has been given a measure of faith. And we're not even beginning to tap into that faith. Some of us have a cup of faith and sit down and stare upon it. And the Lord said to me that night, do you believe that faith is alive? And I said, Lord, if it do have no works, it's dead. And he said, do you believe that faith is alive? 
And I said, there's a scripture with Peter. Peter, you love me? Peter, you love me? Peter, you love me? I said, Lord, what are you saying? He says, anything I give you is alive. I give you faith. Some people killing it with doubt. You know the sentence I hate to hear most? I have faith in a boat. Faith and boat are two diametrically opposed words. They don't belong in the same sentence. I have faith, full stop. Sometimes I live in work and I go and take a bus. I don't know a bus for I face my circumstances. I don't face them. I face them. And it's not a list I'm speaking. <laughs> I don't have a list. That is not baby you talking. Sometimes we both faith it to the bus stop, right babe? <laughs> what is audacity? A boldness, a daring, especially with confident disregard for conventional thought, other restrictions. My favorite definition is shameless boldness. Because Romans say anybody, Romans 10 verse 11 says, anyone who believes in God will never be put to shame. So guess what? I'm believing with all the audacity I can muster. I believe if God tell me I'm going to get a car, I must make a parking space ready for my car. Right? And I believe if anybody put anything in my parking space, I must tell them, take it out because that's where my car is going to go. Right? <laughs> I say the truth, you know. <laughs> Lord, the sales lady called me and told me, said the car gone down, you know, and have I gone to the bank? I said, I'm not seeking local financing. Mm -hmm. Say hallelujah. Yeah. 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 But I want to kind of lost when I should think I'm getting financing from Farid. <laughs> but I'm dealing with heavenly financing. Right? So the only thing I said to her, darling, it doesn't matter what the car costs. When it's time for me to get it and everything has been put in place, I'll come and drive out my car. I think it was lost and all that I didn't say I'd come and pay and drive the car. Right? I said, I, and I'm not thief in it. I'll be driving it out quite legally. <laughs> John 1, <clears throat> verse 46 to 51. When Philip called Nathaniel to come and see the Lord, he said, can any good thing come out of Nazareth? And Philip said, come and see. Yeah. Jesus saw Nathaniel coming to him and said to him, behold, an Israelite indeed with whom there is no deceit. <laughs> Let me just. <laughs> when he sees Nathaniel, he goes, see an Israelite, you work out tell life. Right? And he said, where you know me from? I see you sitting under the tree. And he said, Rabbi, you are the Messiah. And he said, because I told you, in other words, me tell you that and you believe me, then you're going to see angels descending and ascending from heaven. And you're going to walk and then hold me. And I went, whoa, just for believing, just for believing, you walk under an open heaven. Amen. Now, let me tell you what, lock up heaven for you. Is when you get the blessing and you pour it out, poured out into your storehouse and then you lock up the storehouse you want it for you one. You don't get the blessing for yourself. You get the blessing to share. Right? Sometimes, you know, some of us get a little word. Go get past that fifty thousand dollars. Now me have the money they put on cars, you know, me old age pension and whatever, whatever. Right? And then all of a sudden. The devil get behind me, Satan. I rebuke you, right? When in fact are you lock up, you want a blessing? When Elijah and the, the widow, let me tell you something. I recognize something about that widow, you know. You know why her oil and her flour never run out? She must have been feeding her neighbors. She must have been feeding her neighbors. So when you get the blessing, not lock you up, not tight with it. Right? So people, you know, one of the, the, what I think is the most blasphemous things that a world young can say to me, have a little wisdom. <laughs> can you say, Pastor? Have a little wisdom. Make a provision for failure. No! My God is not a God of failure. Okay. Auntie Yvonne, can you give out those declarations for me, please? And when I looked at that, you know, I looked at that scripture and I said, 
Where did I see this before? Genesis 12. Just hurry. Genesis 28. Where Jacob saw the angels ascending and descending. And <laughs> when he, God told him how he was going to bless him, what did Jacob say? And I will give you a tenth of everything you give me. So the tithe is tied to the blessing. Okay? So when God said, we're of the storehouse, <laughs> said again, the tithe is tied to the blessing. Okay? So when God said, bring me my tent, and I'll open the storehouse, and, and, ah, and rebuke the devourer. No, let's take on God's job. Pay your tithes with a willing heart. When you get blessings, share it. You know, I had a little red Camry, those of us, those of you who know it. I, I will tell you, because I will tell you the truth, why that car stop work? Because it started grumble. Everybody want me to carry them everywhere. Nobody know I put no guests in the car. They want me to carry them all over the place. Car stop work. <laughs> Four months later, light bulb go off in my head. Fall flat on my face. That can't preach. Lie down right and there. Beg, beg God to forgive me. Come on, preach right there. <laughs> About and told them what my thoughts were and I apologize to them. Come on. All of a sudden money come to fix the car. You're talking truth How are here. You're talking truth. You understand what I'm saying to you? That's you can't be mean with your blessing. You lock it up, you listen, if you lock up grain in a storehouse, right? Walk we'll to it. We will take you up. Right? It's spoiled. Mildew. You can't eat it again. You can't eat it again. It not benefit you. I not benefit nobody because it's not benefiting the kingdom of God. So you have some decisions to make. Sometimes, you know, what I notice, I can't really say in this church because I'm the only church I've been to in the last 20 years. No, I tell you a lie, I tell you the truth. Right? But when a prophet come here and says, so, shoot everybody draw out money. Because you want the blessing. You can't bribe God. Come on. Uh, 